Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to greet you on this Thursday afternoon, December the 3rd. Can you believe that we are three days into the month and 22 days away from Christmas? And so what I like to say to all of us, let's not let this COVID-19 pandemic take our Christmas joy. Christmas is the most exciting time. It is the time that God gives us God's best gift. God gives us his unspeakable gift. God shows his love in a most profound way because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we have the opportunity to share God's love with others in this season. And so I look forward to Christmas um, we will have a Christmas Eve service. Hope that you will join us here at 7 o'clock. And then I hope that on Christmas morning, we will wake up and say, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. So come on. Good to see you, Melissa. How are you? Valerie, Deborah Ward, how are you? Brenda Allen, how are you? Good to see all you, Sister Ruby, Ram Ruby Ramsey. Always good to see you, Joan. Sister Jacqueline Wallace, thank you for your faithfulness. Good to see all of you. I'm not going to keep you long today. Of course, we're in the office today. We're preparing for our Sunday worship experience. So we will have in-person worship on Sunday. Won't you join us at 1045 for our worship experience? We have a guest preacher um, that will be sharing with us on Sunday, but pastor will be here as we praise the Lord together. Let me also thank those of you who joined us for our Bible study on last night. We had Bible study last night. Our facilitator was Doriel Laria. And so we are studying God's word and we're talking about God's love. Yesterday's lesson, last night's lesson was confident love because throughout scripture, not only do we understand that God loves us, but in this series, you also understand that God has given us a new commandment that we love one another. And really the manifestation of how much we love God is demonstrating how we treat our brothers and sisters. So let's show each other love, especially in this season. I hope that all of you are doing well. And let me now just move straight to the message that's on my heart for today. And what I want to talk about today is don't be impressed with first impressions. Don't be impressed with first impressions. Normally we see someone and we make a decision about them just on the first impression. Now first impressions are important. That's why it's always good to look your very, very best, but don't make your final decision based on first impressions. Let me share this meditation with you and then I'll go right into the word. This meditation is titled First Impressions. As I shopped for groceries one day, I was perceived as a thief by one person and a hero by another. As I exited the supermarket, an employee said, excuse me, sir, there are too many unbagged items in your cart. This is evidently a strategy used by shoplifters. When he saw that they were products too big to be bagged, he apologized and sent me on my way. In the parking lot, a woman glanced at my gold embroidered sportsman's cap, mistaking it for a military hat. She said, thank you for defending our country. Then she walked away. The supermarket employee and the woman in the parking lot had each formed hasty conclusions about me. It's easy to form opinions of others based on first impressions. When Samuel was to select the new king of Israel from the sons of Jesse, he too made a judgment based on first impressions. However, God's chosen was not any of the older sons. Spirit told Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical nature. God chose David the youngest, who looked least like a king. God help us view people through his eyes, for the Lord does not seize as men. The Lord looks at the heart. And so what I want to suggest to us today 
is to make sure that our hearts are pure, especially in this Advent season, which is a season of anticipation as we wait for God's greatest gift to the world, Jesus the Christ. It's also a season of hope because that we know that God is a man, that God will not lie, that God will keep his promise. Let's look at the context in which our meditation is found. First Samuel chapter 16, commencing with verse 1. And my first point is, let's pray and be very, very careful. No matter how upset we get, no matter how depressed we get, no matter what the challenges are that we may face, let's make sure that God does not take God's spirit away from us. Because when the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you can do anything. When God's favor is with you, then all things are possible. In this text, chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, the Lord says to Samuel, who was the prophet, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. The background of the story, of course, the Saul was chosen to be king because the people wanted a king. At first they were under what was called a theocracy. God was in charge. But then they looked at other nations, they had a king, so they wanted a king. God really did not want to give them a king, but he decided to oblige them and give them the desires of their heart. And Saul was chosen as king. He was very handsome, he was tall, he was humble, he was dedicated to his work. But as time went on, pride took over his life and he became narcissistic and felt that he was more important than anyone. And he no longer worshiped and praised God as he had before. And God became upset and God removed God's spirit from him. Let me tell you, we're in an awful way, no matter what's going on, when the spirit of the Lord is not with us. Because when God's spirit is with you, then you can do all things. And I'm so glad that God looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Even those people who don't believe in God, they still are the beneficiaries of God's spirit. If God were to remove his spirit from any of us, we'd be turned over to a reprobate mind. We would not even have control of our actions. It's only because of the grace and mercy of God. And so God removed his spirit from Samuel. I mean, removed his spirit from Saul and said, I'm choosing somebody else to be a king. And let me tell you that the Lord chooses, and I don't know about you, but you want God to elevate you, not people. Because when people elevate you, then they want you to dance to their music. When God elevates you, nobody can bring you down because what God has for you is for you. And so Samuel says, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. If Saul knows that he will no longer be king, the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. In those days had to sacrifice an animal to atone for their sins. And so God says to the prophet, take an animal with you. And when Saul speaks to you, tell him that you come to make a sacrifice to the Lord and invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate because God is the one that chooses. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? They thought the prophet might come with not good news. He may come with a order that destruction was coming or that there would be trouble in the land. And Samuel replies, yes, I come in peace. I have simply come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse, who was the father, and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointing, anointed stands before me 
because Iliad was that handsome, tall, strong, built young man. And I'm going to park here. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. The Lord, people look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. You know the rest of the story. Jesse had eight sons, seven more sons are paraded before Jesse, and God rejects all of them and says, is there not another child? Yes, we have a younger son, and he's out there in the pasture tending to sheep. He's young, he's struggling. Certainly you don't want him. God says, bring him in. I mean, the prophet Samuel says, bring him in. And God speaks to Samuel and says, the Lord's anointed stands before you. You know the rest of the story. David is anointed king. And the spirit of the Lord becomes upon David. And that is what, in, that is what gives David the power and the strength to do all the things that David is able to do. So when a bear comes to eat up the sheep, it is David who is able with the strength because of the anointing of God to kill the bear and a lion. And it is the anointing of God that allows David to kill Goliath. And ultimately, he is anointed before he's appointed. And in God's own time, God will appoint his anointed to the position that God wants them to have. And so one of the gifts that you should pray for for this Christmas is that the Lord's anointing would fall upon you. Don't worry about the material things. Don't worry about having the biggest TV, the biggest car, the biggest house, all of those material things. They're wonderful in their place. Trust me. I mean, I love gadgets. I mean, I have the Apple Watch. I have a Movado Watch. I mean, I love stuff. But the most important thing is to make sure that your heart is right. And when your heart is right, then you can receive the blessings that God has for you. And when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, the Spirit of the Lord will give you peace, give you joy, will give you direction for your life. And so what I want to suggest is let's not get carried away by first impressions. Let's not get carried away about material things. But let's prepare our hearts for this Christmas and... I want to close with Psalm 51, verses 10 to 12. And let's make this our prayer. Create in me, David says. This is after he had fallen into sin and he had transgressed against the will of God. And, and, and he wanted to get back in a relationship with God. And so he cries out to God. And this is my prayer for you. And this is my prayer for me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 11, do not cast me from your presence, or he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. So while we may be concerned about our outside, understand that the inside is so much more important because God is a searcher of the intents and the hearts of men and women. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. He heard my plea and pitied every groan. When trouble comes, I hasten to his throne. Let's pray. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. And for your word that is so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth while we yet try to understand it, we give you thanks. Now, God, I pray for each person that's in the sound of my voice. I pray, oh God, that the north of the Holy Spirit will fall upon each of us so that we will see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and walk in your will and in your way. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us. Use us to your glory. And, oh God, you get glory out of our lives. Now, oh God, we pray for those that have been affected and affected with this COVID-19 virus. Those that are in hospital, oh God, we still know you've got more healing in the hem of your garment than all the hospitals in all the world. We pray, oh God, that you will heal, touch, and deliver. We pray for those that have lost loved ones as a result of this virus and even as a result of just the fact that in your own way and in your own province, you're calling from labor to reward. 
but oh God, grant those people who are mourning your peace. Make real the words of Jesus. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We hear the words of the psalmist. Weep in me and endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. We want to thank you for how you've protect us, protected us, for how you've kept us. Mahalia Jackson would say, for the fact that you've never left us. Now continue to cover us with your blood. We thank you that a vaccine is on the way. But even in the meantime and even after there is a remedy, we still place ourselves in you because we know that you are the remedy for whatever is affecting us. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Good to see you, Melody. Leroy, always good to see you. Brother Joe Charles, good to see you. Angela Kelly, thank you so much. Stephanie, how are you doing? Good to see you. Of course, Joan, thank you. You're always in Bible study. Good to see you. Una Reed, good to see you. Shirley Millard. Let me take this opportunity and wish all of you the joy of the Christmas season and the peace and love that comes in this season. Let's continue to look to Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. So please join us for our worship experience on Sunday. I'll see you on tomorrow at the same time. Always remember and know that God loves you and so do I. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you again and we praise you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. And may he grant you the joy and the peace that comes in this season as we wait in anticipation with great hope of God's unspeakable gift to the world, Jesus the Christ. In his master's name, we pray with thanksgiving that everybody say amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on tomorrow at the same time. God bless you.